Hello friends, this video on current electricity part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 13 before going ahead with this part. Now we will talk about the term which we left there to discuss later. We talked about resistivity in between, right? When we derived the expression for resistance, we got something called rho, which we called, called as resistivity or specific resistance. So now we will discuss about resistivity. So let us see what is resistivity. Resistivity is often known as specific resistance because it is the resistance of a specific material and it is very specific to a particular material. So how do we define resistivity? For that again we will take help of the expression for resistance. We saw that resistance is equal to rho L by A. Now if we put resistance as 1, L as 1 and A as 1, I am sorry not resistance, if we put length as 1 and area as 1, what do we get? We get R is equal to rho. So that means resistivity is nothing but the resistance of unit length and unit area of a conductor. So when the length of the conductor is 1 and the area of the conductor is 1, then we say that the resistivity is equal to the resistance. So we can define resistivity as resistance of unit length and unit area of a conductor. Simple, right? So what the greater the resistivity, greater is the field needed to develop a given current density. So what happens if your resistivity is more? What will happen? Greater amount, see resistivity is specific to a material. Okay, so if the, if the resistivity of a particular substance is very high, that means if you apply a given, let us suppose you have two different objects, object A and object B. Okay, let me, let me consider it like this. Let us suppose you have two objects, object A and object B. Now the resistivity of object A is very high. So the resistivity of A is very high and the resistivity of B is comparatively low. Now if you apply an electric field, a specific electric field say E to this object, what will happen? Some amount of current will be produced. Let us say it pro amount of current which is produced is I. Now, if you apply the same amount of electric field to this object A, since its resistivity is very high, so maybe that this amount, the same amount of electric field is not sufficient to develop the same amount of current density. So maybe in this case, the amount of current which is developed is I, which is very much small as compared to this I, because in order to get more current, you will have to make more electrons flow, right? And the resist, the obstacles in the path of the uh, electron flow should be less. But if the resistivity is already very high, then your resistance will also be very high. So if resistance is high, then your current will be less. So if you want to overcome that in greater resistivity, you will have to apply more electric field. So in this case, if you apply the electric field, E2 which is much greater than E, in that case maybe you will be again able to get the same amount of current. So if you want to match the current in both the cases, you will have to apply more electric field to the conductor which has greater resistivity so that you are able to get the get a given amount of current density. So resistivity for a perfect conductor is zero. Because if it is a perfect conductor, that means it conducts everything smoothly. Perfect conductor means there is no resistance at all. There is no obstacle in the path of the electron flow. So for perfect conductors, resistivity is zero. Similarly, if I talk of perfect insulators, the resistivity is infinite. There is so much of resist resistivity, resistivity because of which there is so much of obstacles and so much of resistance that current cannot flow at all. That is why they are called insulators because they do not allow current to flow. So perfect conductors, resistivity is zero. Perfect insulators, resistivity is infinite. 
so that is all about resistivity so resistivity and resistance are very much related as you can see their terms are also very much related so resistance talks about the resistance of a conductor as a whole resistivity talks about a specific material i mean that conductor can be anything right when i talk of resistance of a conductor that conductor can be anything it can be a copper wire it can be a gold sheet it can be any other metal right so uh, when i talk of resistance i talk of a conductor but when i talk of resistivity i talk about the resistivity of copper similarly i talk about resistivity of gold so this is basically a property which is specific to a particular material so however resistance is directly related to resistivity so if resistivity of a material is more the resistance of that conductor will also be more right okay so now let us look at the variation of resistivity with temperature as we saw in case of resistance we studied about the temperature variation of resistance also right so let us look at the resistivity variation with temperature for metals first we are talking about metals so in case of metals at normal temperature i don't think i need to explain you much because i have already discussed about this and by just by looking at the uh, this animation you can understand so in the first case i have shown you the normal temperature scenario where the free electrons are moving even though it is colliding with the metal atoms but still it is managing to move so there is some resistance but still there is some current flow as well in the second scenario when the temperature increases this metal atoms or the metal positive ions whatever you call it they also start vibrating they also start they are also set in random motion now when they also start moving the collision becomes all the more because you see it here it, it is facing all the more obstacles and they are they are able to move very slowly so therefore the resistivity will increase because the obstacles are increasing so the resistivity is also increasing as we increase the temperature so in this case what happens the atoms also vibrate with greater amplitude so more frequent collision therefore average time between collision also decreases i mean it the collision start happening so frequently therefore the average time between the collision will also decrease and therefore the drift velocity will also decrease drift velocity decreases means current decreases right so in this case what happens more frequent collisions right now more frequent collision will result in average time between collision average time between collision will decrease as a result that means tau will decrease therefore vd that is drift velocity will also decrease as a result current will also decrease so this is what will happen in this case so if if you look at the resistivity variation i mean if we plot it graphically it would look somewhat like this if we have temperature along x axis your resistivity variation would look somewhat like this as the temperature increases resistivity also increases so now let us look at the variation of resistivity with temperature in case of non metals till now we discussed mostly about metals as we discuss mostly about conductors so now let us have a look at the variation of resistivity in case of non metals generally what happens in case of non metals is the electronic configuration of non metals are quite different than that of metals i think you all are aware of all these things from your chemistry knowledge you would have studied about all these things in the periodic table and the properties of different groups and periods right so from there you can see that if you look at the electronic configuration of non metals and if you compare it with metals in metals you will always have free electrons in the valence shell that means there will be one or two electrons left in the valence shell who will always want to come out of the atom but this is not the case in case of non metals in non metals you don't have those free electrons easily available for conduction so what happens when you increase the temperature 
more electrons become available for conduction as they set themselves loose from the atom because in case of non metal in in case of metals what happens is the electrons there are the valence electrons are very loosely bound to the nucleus so in this case what happens as the temperature increases more electrons become available for conduction so that means the conductivity will increase as the temperature increases that means the resistivity is decreasing right so let us review it once more in case of metals what happened was there were valence electrons which were available and which were loosely bound to the nucleus so as soon as you apply a little bit of energy the electrons move out of the atom and they are your free electrons which conduct current but in this case what happens is in non metals all the electrons are quite tightly bound to the nucleus so when you increase the temperature quite high at that high temperature the electrons start coming out and they leave the atom so more electrons become available for conduction as they set themselves loose from the atom as a result the conductivity increases with temperature and therefore the resistivity decreases with temperature so if you plot the graph in case of a non metal let us say if you take the temperature along x axis and if you take the resistivity along y axis your resistivity will decrease with increase in temperature so your curve looks somewhat like this so the decrease is exponential okay so here we noticed an important thing that in case of metals the resistivity increases with temperature but in case of non metals the resistivity decreases with increase in temperature thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thank you once again